In previous lessons, we've been using the browser's built-in XML HTTP request object to make HTTP requests to APIs. In Vue, there are many ways we can make HTTP requests, but instead of using this object directly, what we're going to use instead is a library that's built on top of it called Axios. Now, in Axios, the syntax is much simpler. To do an HTTP GET request, you simply write axios.get passing the URL. The result that you get from this is a special proxy value called a promise. And a promise is representing a value that is not necessarily known right away, since this request is going to take some time to complete in the background. Instead, it simply promises to supply the result at some point. The trick then is to associate a handler function which acts on the result once it is delivered. This can be specified in the then method. Finally, we can also specify a catch method, which handles the case where the promise results not in a value, but rather an error. I'm going to demonstrate the library using a modified version of the famous Brits example that we studied in our Ajax video. This time, we're going to use Axios, we're going to use bootstrap styling, and we're going to put those Brits in a table instead. First, let's check out the internal API endpoint, which is getbrits.php in the same directory, and which can be inspected in the browser or in the Postman tool. Just as in the Ajax video, the API endpoint gives us a list of Brits that we can iteratively render in the page. What I'm going to do now is create a view instance in the usual way, mounting the main div element with ID app. This time, however, I'm going to define a function in a special property called mounted. And what happens here is that this function is automatically called the moment that the view instance has mounted the app element and is ready to be used. You can think of it as an initialization function. In particular, I'm going to use this function to call Axios and request the data from the getBrits API endpoint. As Axios is a third-party library, first I have to go to their main project page and get the CDN link to include. Okay, so it's time to request our JSON object. With this library we've included, we simply call axios.get, passing it the URL of the API. This returns a promise which is like a placeholder for the actual result, which will only become available once the request completes in the background. To specify what we want to do with that result once it comes in, we can apply the then method. For readability, we typically specify this on the following line. Finally, we need to specify a function inside the then method, and you'll notice that we use a slightly different syntax from normal for this. Instead of writing function response, followed by the function body, we use this arrow function syntax, where we directly specify this single parameter, followed by an arrow, followed by the function body. Here, response is an object provided by Axios, which encapsulates the result of the request. I'm going to create a property in the data object to make sure I can store the result of this request. I'm going to call this property Britons. By default, Axios passes the JSON data into a JavaScript object and makes it available via response.data. So I'm simply going to assign that to the Britain's property. I'm also going to quickly add some mustache syntax to make sure that all of this worked as expected. Lovely, that seems to work. So what I'm going to do now is use the v4 directive to iteratively build a table from that data. I just need to make sure I extract the array from the Britain's property of the object. There we go, we're pretty much done.
To complete this, I'm going to use the catch method to define an error handling function. Initially, let's simply display an alert pop-up containing the error information provided by Axios. Let me demonstrate it by messing up the URL of the API. OK, now let's do something more clever. If an error occurs, I'm going to update the value of a new error flag in the data object. And I'm going to use views conditional directives to display a special error message if this flag is ever true. Lovely. And that's our Axios get request done. Axios post requests are out of scope for the exam, but if you're interested in how to do them for your project, please stick around a little longer. I have a second API endpoint called addbrit.php, which takes posted form data and adds a Brit to the data store. Before I look at the API endpoints, I'm going to use vModel to set up a two-way binding between the form inputs and the data model. And then I'm going to create an event handler to be triggered upon a form submission. Initially, the event handler is just going to alert us to the values of full name and vocation in the data model. I'm using the von directive here to attach the event handler for the submission event. And then I'm using the at symbol as shorthand for von. Before I forget, I also need to add event.preventDefault to make sure that the form submission doesn't refresh the page. OK, that seems to be working properly. So let's set up the Axios post request. And we can do this using axios.post. We're going to pass a URL. We're going to define a function for handling the response. And we're going to define a function for handling the error case. Before we write another line, let's have a look at how the API works. And we need to do this in Postman since it's a post request. If we just post to add Brit right away, you'll see we get an error message because we're missing the data it expected in the body. So let's go and add that data, which is full name and vocation. And then when we post it, you'll see that it returns an updated version of the list that includes our new Brit sorted into the correct position. When I refresh the page, you'll see that my interaction in Postman has actually updated the data. So now let's implement the request in Axios. OK, for an Axios post request, we need to provide the URL of the API. followed by the body of the request, which we'll do later, followed by a configuration object in which we specify the headers. In this case, URL encoded form data. With that done, let's make sure that full name and vocation from the data model are inserted into the body of the post request. Then finally, because addbrit.php returns the updated JSON object, we can use exactly the same handler functions to store the updated data or handle the error. As you can see, submitting Tony Hoare adds them right into the table, which is exactly what we wanted. But before I finish, I'm going to improve the usability of this a little bit by making sure that a message is displayed when the form is submitted and by resetting the contents of the form each time.
lovely jubbly, everything seems to be working as expected. The final, final thing that I'm going to do is make sure that the values in the body of the post request are properly encoded. This makes sure that values such as the ampersand, which have a special meaning here, don't cause any issues. And that's the end of the mini video. We introduced Axios, a popular library with Vue developers for making HTTP requests. It's a promise-based client built on top of the XML HTTP request object. We introduced the syntax of a GET request, which requires the URL of the API, and then two functions for handling the response that you eventually get, which could be some data or it could be an error. We showed how it could be called automatically by using the mounted property of view. And finally, out of scope for this module, but interesting in itself, we showed you how to do post requests using the Axios library. See you next time.